Good afternoon. Let's start. So the first speaker of the, the afternoon session is Maria Antonia Iedo, right? <laughs> she will talk about a star product on N equal one chiral superspace. Okay. Thank you very much. Yeah. yeah. So I was saying that I am grateful to the people that organized this interesting workshop in this uh, wonderful place and also for inviting me to give uh, this talk. So I'm going to talk. Uh, 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 Elaborate a little bit on what what uh, Rita Fiorezzi did uh, yes, just yesterday. He... This is the plan of my talk. I start with an introduction, then I will explain the classical picture. Uh, then we, I will show explicitly the deformation that uh, people were asking yesterday for what was this deformation that we were talking about so much. I will show it explicitly. Then we will see that there is a star product. We can uh, compute a star product explicitly uh, with this deformation. And I will do it in the case, in the non super case. And then in the super case, uh, that is a star product, a super star product that is put in terms of the star product in the non super case. And then I will state my, my conclusions. So, First of all, uh, I re remind you that uh, the yeah. yeah the conformal group in dimension four is SO four comma two, but it's a spin group is U two comma two, and uh, we are going to work with the spin group of the conformal group because we are doing, going to do supersymmetry, so we need uh, spinors uh, in, in our in our formalism. Um, this uh, uh, group has a complexification that is, that is just SL four C, and we are going to work all the all the time in the complex realm. Uh, because then one can see structures that we don't see in the in the real one. The idea is to work in the complex to realize that uh, the Grassmannian of two planes in four dimensional space is a is the complexified conformal space, and then uh, realize that uh, uh, the Minkowski space, the complexified Minkowski space, is uh, the big cell, so it's an open set that is uh, dense in G two comma four. This is the non super the non super case, but the structure of Grassmannian is not true over the the, the real uh, the real conformal space is not uh, is a compactification of the real conform of the real Minkowski space, but is not a Grassmannian. So that's why uh, we need to go uh, to the complex to see this structure. I would not care about the real form when once you have uh, the it in the complex, it is enough to find a conjugation. Well, it is enough. It may be hard, but uh, it is enough to find this conjugation and take uh, the fixed points by that conjugation, and that will be the real form. But I will not deal with this uh, here. So, uh, in the non super case, uh, to convince ourselves that uh, SL4 is, is the conformal group, here what I have written is uh, the Poincare group times uh, the dilations. Look that here uh, X and Y should be invertible, and uh, we will have an action on the big cell. The big cell will be, I will show you later that this is the Minkowski space, but it is written in this way in terms of the Pauli matrices. And the action of this group on, on this uh, matrix, two by two matrix, is uh, of this form that it reminds us of the, of the Poincare group, the action of the Poincare group. In general, uh, if I have a conformal theory uh, or, or a theory defined on conformal space, I, go to, uh, I can go to a theory that has a broken symmetry. Uh, just restricting uh, to the big cell, then 
it will admit other terms that break this conformal symmetry. Uh, and we will pass from conformal space to the big cell, and by compactification, we come back from Minkowski space to the conformal space. Uh, this is the formalism of twisters uh, that were uh, invented by, by Penrose, and he thought that it was a way of introducing a non commutativity in space time, a uh, thing that proved not to be the case. Uh, the, the picture is still classical, and the non, -com non commutativity or the in indefiniteness, it should be introduced by hand. Indeterminacy should be introduced by hand. Okay, so what we are going to do is uh, uh, what we want to, to do in, in the super case, but I will explain it here in the non super case, is to substitute the conformal group. I will not say anymore that it's complexified. I will assume that it's complexified forever. So uh, substitute the conformal group by, by, by SLQ for C, so it is the standard quantum group. And uh, then we will try to define uh, uh, an algebra uh, that we will call the quantum Grassmannian, and it has the right properties uh, uh, to be called quantum Minkowski, quantum Minkowski space. The good thing is that uh, we also can restrict uh, here to a big cell, uh, in quotation marks for a big cell, and this. Uh, will allow us to define the Minkowski space. We will see that it has our, the right coaction of the of the super conform, of the conformal group, quantum conformal group. And then the star product uh, will correspond to choose an ordering rule in the generators of the deformation that we are going to to see. This is process is not non-trivial because it involves a lot of calculations and uh, the result of the star product will not be a nice formula. It will be it's a formula that is a bit a mess, but still being a mess, it is one of the few examples examples that we have of, of a star product that is uh, explicit. If not, ask the people working with Konsevich uh, a, a star product how difficult it is to get an explicit star uh, star product. The characteristics of the deformation, yes. I, I don't hear very well. Yes, exactly. We, we would like to see that the formation quantization or a start product of, of uh, the classical. They will be isomorphic algebras, okay? The characteristics of this deformation is that it is uh, the Poisson bracket uh, that is the leading order uh, term is quadratic in the generator. And uh, there are other deformations, but there are many deformations of the Minkowski space. Others that are, for example, linear, uh, 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 have a, there are others that have a linear Poisson bracket. And, but those deformations, sometimes they have a, a difficulty added that it, they don't have a Lorentz group, not even a deformed Lorentz group as a subgroup of the group of transformation of that uh, uh, quantum space. So this, uh, uh, since we are working with, with the quantum group, the conformal group, we will have the symmetry and the conformal group, and we will have also symmetry under the Poincare subgroup. So this picture carries, carries over the super setting. Uh, then the conformal group, we take now uh, supersymmetry n equals one, and then we have uh, the supergroup SL4 slash one. Uh, and in, in dimension, this is the, the, comp the, the super dimension. The super dimension four slash one, we have two kinds of super space. One is what we call the, the chiral super space or anti chiral, and uh, the, there are two versions. And uh, this super space corresponds uh, in, in the conformal compactification corresponds to this Grassmannian of two zero planes inside 
eh, de, de for one eh, super space. The super fields uh, defined in the Minkowski space, perhaps this formula is more familiar to you, are like functions uh, of the coordinates of space-time and the two odd coordinates that form a violet spinner. And uh, the super field is written in this way, where here uh, I'm putting the contraction, the usual contraction of the thetas with the, with the anti-symmetric matrix. Also here I have contractions of theta with psi uh, with the anti-symmetric matrix. See that this is an intrinsically complex superspace because the theta alpha do not have complex conjugate. So uh, this is a space where I cannot put a reality condition. Then we have the real superspace. For, for, uh, uh, to get this, the real superspace, we have to go to the flag, uh, the flag of two zero uh, super subspaces inside the two one subspaces inside the space for slash one and uh, uh, the super fields are like this you see that it's a longer super field because now we have four odd variables that are the chiral violet spinner and the anti chiral violet spinner and one will be under the real form to get the real form one will be the complex uh, of the other so See that in the case of the real, we have many more component fields. Here we have a lot of component fields. Uh, that is still, uh, they are, this is still is, is a super field that is useful uh, to do physical applications. When we go to supersymmetries that are larger than one or perhaps larger, larger than two, uh, the, here we get too many uh, component fields and the, the one would have to impose constraints in, in this covariant constraints on the superfield. And this is very difficult to do, very difficult to find these constraints, or even it is, at least it is unknown. In, I don't know if, it may, if maybe it is impossible. So, but for n equals one, uh, the super space formalism works uh, perfectly well. So our goal is to give a formation of this Grassmannian that will be a definition uh, uh, of the quantum Grassmannian that is still a quantum homogeneous space uh, with respect to SL4 slash one. And then we will choose an ordering rule for the generators to generate the, to, to compute a star product. Okay, so what is the supergroup SL4 slash one? Uh, we have, uh, I have put the generators ordered here like a super matrix. Uh, here we have the GIJ and the G55 are even elements on an arbitrary super algebra, and the gammas are uh, other elements in an, also in an arbitrary super algebra. Uh, this is a four by four matrix, this is a one by one matrix, this is a, a one. Uh, this is a vector and this is the transpose of, of, of a vector. So in general, uh, we want to describe this, this the Grassmannian is, is a plane, is a, uh, the span of two even vectors in the super space, super affine space for a slash one. So these two even vectors look like this. The Latin letters always uh, mean uh, even coordinates in an arbitrary super algebra, and the the um, uh, Greek letters mean mean uh, odd coordinates in this odd elements in this in this super algebra. So you see, with I give two even vectors. This is what is telling me this two slash zero two even vectors, and the span of these two even vectors will give me a plane. But uh, uh, you see, I can always change basis here. Uh, so that means that there is an action of GL2C, a right action of GL2C that allows me to change, uh, uh, to make a change of base among these two, these two vectors. Well, we have a, we are lucky here because G, uh, the, our Grassmannian is a projective super variety. While the, all the Grassmannians and all the flags are projective varieties in, in the non-super case, this is not true in the, in the super case and only 
a few particular ones are projective. This one is projective. Oh. This one is projective and I give you here what is the projective embedding. Uh, what we have to do is to consider the anti-symmetric uh, tensors of order two of the space C4 slash one. This, this space C4 slash one uh, will be the twister space. And it's the space where the SL4 slash one acts uh, and consider the projective uh, space of this uh, uh, over this this vector space this will give me the project project projected space uh, with six coordinates and six even coordinates and four odd coordinates the super plucker embedding takes a plane uh, spanned by the vectors a b and gives me just the wedge product of a and b so it is a map uh, into this space here uh, but uh, uh, if I take a change of basis, here it will change with the determinant. So really this map is, is uh, well defined between the, plane, the two planes and, and uh, lambda to C, C41, C4 slash one is not well defined, it's defined up to a constant that is the determinant. Uh, so it, is, it means that it is defined in the projective space. So what one can show, and uh, uh, this can be done in the in the classical case, and with a bit of effort, uh, we do it in the in the in the super case, is that uh, this um, embedding is an embedding, so it is already injective, but uh, uh, we need uh, to restrict now to the to the image of that map, and the image of that map is given by by generators and relations. These generators uh, that appear here are not other things that coordinates in this space. Okay, and then we impose some homogeneous uh, relations among them. And uh, uh, the solution to these homogeneous relations are the projective space uh, G2 to slash 4, 2 slash, slash 0, 4 slash uh, 1. In the non-classic, non non-super case, all these relations are absent, and uh, I'm left here with a classical Plucker relation that perhaps you know well. Well, one thing that one can uh, prove is that uh, uh, these relations are all the relations that are, sat uh, uh, that are satisfied in order to get the, 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 the Grassmannian. Uh, so, uh, in terms of generators and relations, uh, the ideal generated by these relations is, is uh, the image of the map and it will be denoted by IP. We'll see later how I use this ideal. Uh, we now pass to the other des description because now we, we have seen it as a, as a, a homogeneous space, as a projected space. And now we see it, and uh, we are going to see it as a subgroup, uh, as a subalgebra, sub whether as a subalgebra of SL41. Uh, so, what we do is take the, the supergroup element that was here, this, this, this supergroup element, and we take the first two rows, the first two columns, sorry. And then define these determinants that are here, these determinants uh, among the elements of these columns. This is not a determinant, but uh, okay, this is for the explicit case of A. So one can prove that this uh, expression satisfies the Plucker relations and also that no other independent relations uh, exist among these, these determinants. This means th that is the difficult part to show that there are no other relations among those determinants. So this way, in this way, one retrieves the algebra of the Grassmannian, like the the, the free commutative al super commutative algebra generated by the Qs, the lambdas, and A55, divided by the ideal of the super Plucker embedding, the ideal of this uh, of this uh, of these relations right here. Okay, so if we are able to invert, if we 
consider only the planes uh, where we can invert uh, this uh, first uh, uh, square matrix, uh, two by two matrix that appears here. Uh, this set of planes is what is called the big cell. And uh, uh, well, then we have um, uh, that what is left, you see, you see that it's a, a two by two matrix, matrix plus uh, two out coordinates. And here you have the exact expression of those of those uh, coordinates, and this will be uh, the chiral super Minkowski superspace. Why it is the chiral super uh, uh, super Minkowski space is uh, because if we restrict the the conformal group to this uh, uh, subgroup that is a is a subgroup is the Poincaré subgroup and dilations, and we make it act on a on, uh, uh, plane uh, described by two vectors of the kind that I showed before, we can show that this is equivalent to this other uh, pair of vectors, because here I have to, to use uh, the right action of GL2 to come back to the standard expression, and this can be identified with the super Minkowski space, the chiral super Minkowski space. Okay, here we have the dilations, and here we have Lorentz, and then here we have the, trans the translations uh, uh, of the of the odd quantity. So now we go to the deformation. In order to construct uh, it, uh, we need to define the, what is the quantum matrix superalgebra. Uh, this is uh, done by Mani and I think by somebody else, uh, uh, probably before by Voronovich, I think it was done before. But in the formalism of, of Manning, uh, we have uh, that the sets are uh, matrices. I, I just display in the generators as matrices because of convenience, but these are just generators in, in a super in a uh, in a super algebra that will be non-commutative. Uh, these are even generators, these are even generators, and these two are odd generators. And for me, it will be convenient to put them on equal foot and uh, uh, they will be even or not depending on the on the super in, sub indices that I have uh, that I have here. These are the Manning relations. It, they look complicated, but they look complicated. Yeah. They look complicated only because here there appear minus signs due to the parities uh, in the commutation relations. Otherwise, these are the standard. Uh, in, Man in relations, and they are uh, required these commutation relations to have a coaction of the quantum super matrices on the affine quantum superspace uh, defined uh, by defined superspace R slash S that is defined by these generators X i from i from one to R plus S and uh, with this commutation relation. So to preserve these commutation relations. The, the, the uh, Manning uh, relations have to be satisfied. So for us, uh, R equal four, S equal one, is, this is what we call the quantum twister superspace. Parity of I, parity of J. Okay. What we do now is to make a definition. I would need to define what is going to be the, Grassman, the quantum Grassmannian, and we do it in, inspiring ourselves in what was the Grassmann, the, the original Grassmannian, and we define it to be the the uh, subalgebra of SLQ uh, four slash two generated by these determinants that are now become quantum determinants and uh, uh, the phi that is not uh, changed. So what we want is to give a presentation of this. This is at the definition of our quantum super Grassmannian, and we want to give a definition of the quantum super Grassmannian in terms of generator sub-relations. Uh, so 
well, all we have to do is to compute the commutation relations among these elements. This uh, is non-trivial that the commutation relations from uh, uh, of two DIJs will give me something depending on the DIJs. So this is just uh, an indication that uh, we are doing the things well if it, uh, if this happens. And then on top of that, on top of the commutation relations, we will need to to compute the deformation of the Kluge relations. Okay, so this was uh, this is the algebra that yesterday uh, you wanted to see. Look that uh, uh, it looks complicated. Uh, it has several commutation relations, but all these commutation relations remind us of the quantum uh, uh, actually of the commutation relations of money. In fact. Uh, one can prove uh, that these relations, uh, sorry, well, these, re these relations are, are uh, uh, a subalgebra of, um, of um, a super, super matrix in the sense of in the sense of money. So, uh, well, all these relations have to be taken. With care, but uh, they are not so so unknown. And these are the the, the formed Kluge uh, relations. One can prove also by explicit computation that is not these are not easy computations. That uh, the the here I I'm missing d five five times d five five equals zero. I'm missing that relation. But for the rest. These are the, the quantum superfluke relations. Well, we also prove, you see, if this look complicated, you will see, if you stay until the end of this afternoon, you will see that uh, how are complicated for n equals to the, 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 the difficulty increases a lot. And uh, uh, what we do also, is that, and this is the more difficult part, is to prove that these relations are all the relations that this determinant satisfy. Then we can say that our quantum superalgebra has a presentation in terms of the free algebra generated by uh, DIJ, DI5, and D55, modulo the ideal generated by the quantum uh, superplucker and by the quantum commutation relations. This is a pre presentation of the supergrassmannian. The other thing that is important, but I have not uh, written it here, is that there is the corresponding action of the quantum supergroup on this quantum supergrassmannian. And this is also non-trivial. Uh, uh, what one takes is the coproduct inside SL4 slash one, and then restrict it uh, to the to the Grassmannian. That is a subalgebra of of uh, the algebra of the supergroup. So we have a well-defined coaction. In particular, uh, as for the classical case, we can formally uh, take these generators. Uh, look at here, X, Y, and D, uh, we will have to invert them. Uh, I know that inverting in a non-commutative algebra is, is uh, uh, tricky. But in this case, all the conditions that have to be satisfied are satisfied. So we can adjoin an element x minus 1, y minus 1, and d minus 1. And then uh, we have uh, here what we can call the quantum uh, super Poincare group. I make here a slight change of variables because it, just because it's, it is convenient. OK. So now one can compute the commutation relations of uh, these uh, generators inside uh, SLQ4 slash one. Uh, and we have computed them and we have all uh, explicit that well, we have to, to we need uh, uh, to, to have clear is the commutation relations of the translation algebra the, or the super translation algebra, okay? So we need uh, to compute the commutation relations between T, that is the translation, the even translation algebra, and tau tilde, this tau tilde here, it 
that represents the odd translation. So why the translations? Because this will be our model for the quantum Minkowski superspace. So this is the definition now of the quantum Minkowski superspace is the, com uh, the complexified, okay, quantum super Minkowski space or Minkowski superspace is the free algebra in six generators uh, for even two odd satisfying these commutation relations. These commutation relations can also be computed in terms of the formula uh, that we had before. Well, in terms of, of uh, I didn't put it here, but, but in, terms, in terms of the, of the commutation relations, the commutation relations of the elements of the, of the group. So here I have put in, in this slide, I have the commutation relations among the even uh, elements, the even generators, and then the ones that involve uh, the odd generators are these ones, these ones were, uh, were missing. This looks also uh, complicated, but one can prove that these are a subalgebra of the quantum supermatrices uh, MQ2 slash one times two slash one. Well, one proves also that there is a well-defined coaction of the quantum Poincaré supergroup on this algebra in that this coaction reduces to the standard coaction in the non-super case and when we uh, put uh, uh, Q equals one, so it is also the non-quantum super space, the non-quantum space. So I, we are, I'm arriving almost to the final because now uh, we have the deformation that is clear. How much time I have? So I have a deformation that is uh, now clear that how I compute a star product. I have to choose uh, an ordering rule uh, among the generators uh, of the non-commutative algebra. Uh, this is done for the, for the non-superstar product. I have to prove that monomials A, B, C, D are uh, natural numbers plus, plus, plus zero. I have to prove that this is a basis of this non-commutative superalgebra. I think that is not trivial again. And uh, I have to define this quantization map that takes me a polynomial to this uh, polynomial also in non-commutative uh, variables. Uh, as I said, this, the, the point here is to show that this is a CQ module isomorphism uh, and it's because it is sending one basis to another, to another basis. So this isomorphism has an inverse and then the star product is an associative non-commutative product defined on uh, the standard uh, commutative uh, algebra uh, defined in this way, uh, I take Q0 F star G will be Q0 of F, Q0 of G, and then I will have to take Q0 minus one, and this is the difficult, uh, the difficult part. So I think next transparency shows that you, not, not yet, but I had to explain something before, is that uh, in order to express the, the, super, the, the star product, I need to define, um, I need to define these quantities. Uh, these are just numbers uh, or in other, are, are uh, uh, functions of Q uh, and they are divided, uh, they are split between the one function that depends on K and M. K and M and N are all uh, natural numbers and another part that depends on, on K and N. The, the one that depends on K and N is not difficult to compute, it's uh, this one, but the other needs a recursion relation that is given even here. Uh, one can compute them explicitly. I have computed that to some order, and if not, one can put it in, in a computer and compute uh, this, uh, these functions. This is the only, uh, perhaps the only nasty characteristics of this star product that we have this recursion relation. So this is the star, the star product. Here you have it. This is the star product of two monomials. Uh, and here is where they are, they are 
the, the constants that we defined before. Here we have uh, powers of Q, and then we have monomials, as some uh, uh, of monomials, so we have the start product of two monomials is a polynomial. If we take uh, Q equals to E to the H, and then uh, take the leading order in, in H, we get, uh, in, then we anti uh, we obtain the Poisson bracket, and the Poisson bracket will be the same for all the deformations that is isomorphic to this one. It, that is, if I choose another ordering, I will obtain an isomorphic deformation, uh, but uh, the Poisson bracket will be exactly the same. It will, it will not change. One thing that we can look here is that I have put, while well, here I have uh, two monomials in terms of polynomials, I have put here differential operators, okay? And this is also a feature of this star product, is that uh, this, all the terms in the, to each order in, in H, all the terms that appear can be expressed in terms of differential operators. This is also a property that is not guaranteed in the, in the beginning. So what we can do is to extend, since we are giving a differential operator over the polynomials, it means that the extension to C infinity functions is unique. So we can give the star product in C infinity, in C infinity function. Okay, so this is our star product in the non super case. Yes. Here we have the, the standard coordinates of, uh, I don't know if this is what you ask. These are the, First, you have to do the change of variables from, from the t's to the z mm -hmm. that you call x, that you were calling x. And then, uh, well, I have the Poisson bracket expressed in terms of, or then I don't have the, the full star product expressed in terms of these variables. I don't have the star product expressed in terms of these variables. It, it's not easy to make a change of, of variables inside a star product. But mm -hmm. Yes. Yes, that I, I haven't made that calculation, but in, in principle, it is not easy to do a change of variables, even a linear one. Uh, a linear change of variables inside a star product, it is not, uh, it is not so easy. Maybe here it can be done, but the star product looks quite ugly <laughs> to, to intend to do that. But one can try, of course. Sorry? Yeah. Yes, it's D with respect to C1 and D with respect to C2. Okay, that is uh, in the, at the Poisson bracket order, it is easy to do the change of variables, but not uh, for the star product. So we go to the superstar product. Of course, the superstar product comes uh, in terms of the non-superstar product. And here we have to extend uh, with uh, two odd variables and show that this is also a basis uh, in the non-commutative algebra. And then you, we have a quantization map uh, that takes this element of the basis of the supercommutative algebra to this element of the basis of the non-commutative superalgebra. And uh, to give the star product, I will simplify the notation and I will denote simply by T, A, B, C, D, this monomial the, that depends only on the even variables. And uh, uh, we are, what we are going to do is to give uh, the star product of uh, monomials of this type. That is, uh, the star product is made a with, this is the, the result, it's not, it's not extremely nice. 
but if you see, um, you can see, for, for example, that here it depends U and V and E and F can be only zero one. And uh, so we have it div divided in, in three, in four uh, cases. When both are U and V are zero zero, U and V are zero one, one zero and one one. And then inside we have star products, standard star products of the polynomials that were even polynomials. Uh, the super Poisson bracket. So, uh, if we denote by S1 uh, this term and by C1 the same term in the non superstar product, we also uh, can denote uh, uh, this polynomial or this monomial like uh, RA, where A will be a multi index, or RM in this other case. Then the first uh, uh, term will be the first term in, uh, for the for the non super, and then it will have all these other terms that come uh, accompanied of a, a non super variable or a non super a derivative with respect to a non super variable. I didn't do the anti symmetric section here because it becomes too too long. But to get the the Poisson bracket, you only have to anti symmetrize uh, uh, that. So these are my conclusions. Uh, we have displayed uh, the formation of n equals one conformal superspace that has a good behavior with respect to symmetries, like the quantum conformal supergroup, in particular the quantum Poincaré supergroup that is inside the conformal one. This deformation is given in terms of generators and relations explicitly, and uh, exploits the projectivity of this Grassmannian. One can define the big cell as in the Classical, the classical case it plays the role of quantum Mikoski superspace, and a, there is a quantum Poincare group uh, acting on it. Uh, restricting to the big cell, so restricting to the Minkowski superspace, uh, it is possible to express this deformation in a more concrete way in terms of a normal ordering and, induce, and an induced star product. The Poisson bracket is quadratic. Uh, the Poisson bracket is quadratic, uh, and this is different from other deformations that uh, perhaps are better known uh, that are uh, linear. But it has symmetry proper properties that make it worth it to study. In particular, as I said at the beginning, uh, the, the, they have uh, quantum Lorentz group uh, acting on, on the Minkowski space. So I think that not all the formations uh, that are in the literature uh, have. So this is all. Thank you for your attention. Thank you. Thanks for the nice talk. Uh, other questions? Thank you. Um, so I can see how, how the, all these things work at the level of deformed algebra and the Hopf algebra and all these structures. But it's not clear to me what, what is the aim of that. So if, if, if one would like to, to use this as a, as a model for space, then one would have to define something like quantum field theory. And there I don't see at all how to do that because these structures are typically not compatible with Bose and Fermi statistics. So is that your intention? Uh, or? Why are not compatible with both? Because the, hook, the, the, the coaction of a, of, a, of a Hopf algebra, which is not triangular, usually is not compatible with, doesn't allow the correct positive form of statistics. That, that's an old problem which you had 25 years ago. And somehow, I don't know if there is progress on these things. Well, I don't know. I, I If you say so, it, it, it will be, I didn't know that it's not compatible. I don't see why it, it doesn't have to be compatible with the uh, Bose-Einstein statistics. But uh, if you say so, it, it's it, not for, for the for the all the Dreamfeld Jimbo type of things. It doesn't work simply, or at least only with very 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 strange efforts. Um, so are, are these triangular Hopf algebras or quasi triangular? If we are trying, uh, no, no, the Hopf the associated Hopf algebras are they triangular or quasi triangular? No, or? I. I'm not sure, you know, I'm not sure. I don't remember. I think I, I, I wish I look at that at some point, but I, 
don't remember. I think they are not uh, triangular. Yeah, it's right. Sure, then, then there is typically a problem, but okay. I don't know how to apply it to quantum field theory. I would like to, to know. Other questions? Why can't you take just a scalar quantum field theory and define the endpoint functions to, uh, by the star product? But but what doesn't work? I mean, I can do it. No, I mean, okay, I'm just wondering because I mean, you, you already have, I mean, you fix your Hilbert space. You have a scale of quantum theory, you represent this on the Hilbert space. Now you have the commutative uh, Hilbert space, and on that, you put the star product in. But, but, but you say it works for the moyal wide case. So if you have this green yeah, yeah, yeah. twist. Okay. Okay, okay. Thank you. Other questions? Uh, I don't know if you are aware, but uh, in 2000, uh, um, 2006, I wrote a paper with Voronovich where I was using all that this, this, this kind of uh, quadratic difference. I was obtaining from this M times M, M matrix, the, the, the quadratic deformation. There are many quadratic, this is not the only quadratic deformations that uh, there are, there are many quadratic deformations that have. I, I'm sorry that I don't know your paper explicitly, but uh, I have, there is a paper by, by Estero, Serrant, and I don't know who else, that they give you all the deformations that have a quantum Lorentz group acting on them, and they are all quadratic. So this is not the only quadratic deformation that you can find. I don't know which one is yours. That you mentioned in the beginning, Boronovich. I mentioned You mentioned it. Yes, 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 you said. Because I'm seeing here, I'm seeing here you're right, right. This is different from other deformations of the Minkowski space, perhaps better known that are linear. So there are more ones of linear. No, I, I was saying linear because uh, I know that the linear, well, this is not a result of mine, but the linear ones do not have this quantum Lorentz group uh, acting on, on them. So. Uh, I think that this one is better behaved under symmetry. It's, it's, it's the only thing that I that I say. But there are many quantum the quadratic quantum deformations. This is not the only the only one. Okay. Okay. Thank you. If there are no other questions, we thank the speaker again. Okay. Thank you. And uh, the next speaker. Uh, Tung Tran, he will talk about a uh, twistorial higher spin theory from the IKKT matrix model. This.
Uh, so hello everyone. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank the organizer uh, to invite me uh, to go for in this wonderful conference to give the talk. And the talk I will give today is based on my work with uh, Harold Steinecker, who's sitting in the audience. And it's about three different subjects. So twister theories, high spin theories, and the IKKT matrix models. So let's dive in. So the first thing I want to talk about is high spin gravities. As some of you may know, some of the most promising approaches towards the quantum theory of gravities involve higher spin fields, such as string theories or bug reconstruction via the ads CFT correspondence. And the main ideas behind high spin gravity is that the more massless field you have, the more gauge symmetries. The more gauge symmetry you have, the fewer counter term you have to encounter when you try to quantize some theories of quantum gravities. So in this sense, higher spin symmetries which is an infinite dimensional symmetry should be powerful enough to render UV finiteness of some quantum theories of gravities. And in the context of ADS CFTs, high spin gravities in ADS should be the dual theories of some interesting conformal field theories, such as the Ising models and John Simon meta theories that you heard many times in Jenya's talk. So in this sense, if you understand about high spin gravities, they may help us to make CFT predictions, which is a good thing. Okay, so if high spin uh, symmetry is that good, is that a free lunch? So uh, as you may know that high spin gravities are typically blocked by the no theorems uh, or result, and they are black by pathological non-locality issues. And it's, there has many works uh, working on this, uh, has worked on this. However, there's a few class of high spin gravity that can avoid no theorems. And those include the three dimensional high spin gravities, so these theories are typically topological with no propagating degree of freedoms. And they can be written in churn Simon form, as you can see here. Okay, so the next class is 4D conformal high spin gravities. This is a higher spin extension of Y gravities. And this theory is non-unitary due to the fact that there are, there are higher derivatives in the kinetic actions. More recently, there's a new class of high spin theories called the 4D chiral high spin theories. These theories are non-unitary theories because they have complex actions. However, they, uh, they have propagating degree of freedom, but appear to, to be trivial because uh, this S matrix uh, turned out to be one. So uh, we list them as quasi-topological uh, high spin theories. Okay, so in this talk, I will talk about a high spin gauge theories induced by the IKKT matrix model, which I abbreviate as higher spin IKKT here on the first is four sphere. So this was previously studied by uh, Marcus Berlin and uh, Harold. <clears throat> so the main result I obtained with Harold is the following. So we were able to obtain a twistorial description of the highest spin IKKT on the first is four sphere. Uh, Besides this main result, we also able to obtain uh, to compute the scattering amplitudes of the highest spin IKKT in the flat limit for the first time. We also study the twister action for the self dual young wheel sector of the high spin IKKT, which I uh, like to call this gravitational high spin self dual young wheel. Okay, so that's what the motivation, and this is the outline of my talk. So if you have any urgent questions, please ask me. I can continue. Okay, so no. Okay, so the next thing I want to talk about is the IKKT matrix models. <clears throat> So the IKKT matrix model, which stand for Ishibashi, Kawaii, Kitazawa, and Tsushia, is a model was this uh, was a model discovered in the 96. This is an alternative and constructive description of type 2B superstring theories. So this model can be obtained by dimensional reduction of 10 dimensional super uh, supersymmetric Young Mill theory down to the points. So in this sense, the IKKT matrix model is a zero dimensional th uh, th uh, theories. Uh, space time along with physical field we must form the matrix degree of freedoms. So this is quite similar to the uh, Cornet's approach to non-commutative geometries. Uh, one particular feature that I like about IKKT matrix model is that it's naturally induced a higher spin gauge theories on a fuzzy or quantized, uh, quantized Twitter space. Okay, so as you can see here, we, we have seen this action many times in the conference. This, this action have a, a remarkable simple form. Uh, here, uh, Y and Psi are matrix values, uh, N by N Hermitian matrices field. So this action have a manifest SO10 symmetric uh, symmetries, 
and now by the, met, uh, the matrix, 10 dimensional matrix, delta ij here. So what I want you to remember is that the embedding space of the IKKT is a 10 dimensional space. So beside this SO10 symmetries, the action is also invariant under this uh, gauge transformations where use being any arbitrary unitary matrix. So <clears throat> not that field will emerge at fluctuation of the background, which I denote at Y bar here, okay? So uh, it is safe to assume that we live in four dimensional space time. And for that reason, we will split the 10 dimensional um, matrix into two parts. The first part, delta AB, will be used to describe our target space, which is S4 here. And the second part, uh, delta with curly IJ here, will be used to describe the internal symmetries. So, uh, so S4 subjects to the following constraint where your coordinate YA squared to some radius R squared. Uh, we also require the coordinate YA transform at vector under S05 uh, that have the MAB generators. And this anti-symmetric matrix MAB obey the following relations. So since YA are matrices, they do not commute and their non-commutativity is captured by these relations. Uh, here, theta is a symplectic structure and R square is some natural length scale. So uh, as a remark, the non-commutativity of the Y coordinates will give us some, uh, what's called the fuzzy geometries. Okay, so roughly speaking, S of uh, the fuzzy four sphere is described by S of six algebra subject to the additional constraint y squared to some radius r squared. Okay, so this is what I, uh, so for convenience, I just list this, the previous relation here. So beside these relations, we also have uh, what's so called the self duality constraints. Using this constraint, we can write the space of, of functions in terms of high spin modules <coughs> that are polynomial in terms of theta and y. And they have the following Young diagrams, okay? So in this uh, space of functions, we look for something called the truncated higher spin algebra at the subspace of this curly C. So this uh, truncated higher spin algebra uh, contain high spin modules, which are polynomial only in terms of theta uh, symplectic st uh, uh, structure. So this was previously studied by uh, Marcus and Harold. Good. So as, uh, well, we all know that SO6 is isomorphic to SU4. So uh, by making this following uh, identifications, we can move from SO6 to SU4 and SU4 algebra have, uh, have this form. Okay, <clears throat> so the constraint Y squared squared to some radius R squared become this and the cell duality, uh, cell duality constraint become this, okay. <clears throat> So now the space of function, even though it's looked quite similar to previous case of SO6, uh, but uh, as you notice that the generator Y, uh, yeah, the generator Y is now anti-symmetric matrices, while the LAB generator are now symmetric matrices. Therefore, when you look for the truncated high spin algebra, which consists of high spin modules that are polynomials in terms of the LAB uh, uh, matrices, these uh, <coughs> they will, will be described only in a single row of Young diagrams. Good. So now the above realization of SU4 allow us to make connection with fuzzy Twitter space that I denote as CP3 with the capital N here. And this space is spanned by uh, SU4 vector ZA and its dual Z hat A, where ZA is the homogeneous coordinate of CP3 and Z hat A denote that uh, it defines the complex conjugate of ZA contract with SB4 invariant matrix CAB that uh, will be defined soon. <clears throat> so now CP3 uh, uh, N is defined as this, uh, where the curly H is N, uh, is N particle Fox space. And the relation that describe quantized Twitter space are these relations, okay? So now the take home message that I want you to remember in the construction, uh, our construction is the following. So CP3 and the fuzzy Twitter space will consist of only balanced polynomials in terms of Z and Z hat with cutoff at N. So this is important to remember. <clears throat> so as remark, 
What we have discussed so far is fully quantum, and there is not yet a notion of geometry of space time from fuzzy ambient space alpha. Because uh, the metric contains anti symmetric part due to the non commutativity of coordinates addressed by the symplectic structure theta EV. However, we can have a commutative geometry in the usual sense when we take the limit where the little, the natural length scale R go to zero. <clears throat> so what is that limit? So that is the semi-classical limit, also known as the large N limit. So in this limit, matrices become effectively commutative since the natural length scale scale at the radius divided by the capital N. In this limit, space time will emerge and the, high, the truncated high spin algebra, denoted THS here, will coincide with the high spin algebra of the target space, which is S4. So to go from quantum to semi-classical, we need to know some replacement rules. And these rules are summarized nicely in the review of Harold uh, here. So what do we do? So uh, in quantum regimes, uh, where we have matrices, uh, denoted by YA, uh, then when we go from quantum regime to semi-classical regime, we just reply this uh, cap, uh, capital A, uh, capital, <laughs> capital letter Y by lowercase letter Y. And these are functions. We also re replace the commutation relations uh, by a Poisson bracket with an I factor to keep track of unitarities. And then the trace in the inside the uh, IKKT actions will be replaced by an integral uh, with some uh, measure, symplectic measure that will be defined soon. So now since we already have uh, a proper notion of geometries, let's try to uh, parameterize our coordinate as the following. So we split YA, where A running from one to five into two parts. The first part, Y mu, where mu running from one to four, will be the tensions mode of this y, and then the y5 is defined by this. So uh, you can obtain the um, metric of the force sphere as the following. So this also known as the affine patch of the force sphere. OK, so now um, since, um, OK, so uh, since we already have connection to Twister, let me try to be more specific. So now let me try to parameterize our homogeneous coordinates ZA by two spinner. They are Y spinner with opposite chiralities. Uh, so now let me define the Euclidean Twitter space, which I call PT here, as an open subspace of CP trees where I remove the projective line lambda alpha equals zero. Furthermore, I want to uh, have an SU4 environment operators, number operators, to be non-zero. And this number operator defines a follow. Okay, so if you're not familiar with these notations, this is here. So the angle bracket defined like this, and the square bracket defined like this. <clears throat> okay, so now uh, I also want to define the SP4 environment matrix that I mentioned before. Uh, so this uh, matrices, CAB, also now at infinity twister. And epsilon is just the use of um, SP2 invariant matrices. Okay, so as some of you may know that the correspondence between Twitter space and space time is expressed via the incident relations uh, that, that uh, relate mu alpha with lambda by a two by two matrices X. And it has the following inverse, okay? And so here X tilde is dimensionless and the usual x is dimension four, so we have to relay them. And the relation between x and x theta is the following. Okay, so now le let me consider this symplectic form also known as the Keller form. So by expanding in terms of spinner and plugging in the incident relation in the previous slide, then we obtain these relations. So from these relations, we can identify uh, the CP3 as the CP1 bundles over S4, where S4 is our base space and CP1 are our fibers. So this can also be understood using the following half map, following by our stereographic projections as the following. Okay, so here's gamma is SO5 uh, gamma matrices. So using this half map, it's, it's allow us to read up two important equations with a capture in the box uh, here. So 
So just ignore the second relations. The first relation tells us something interesting. So the inner product between lambda and its dual lambda hat is nothing but the conformal factor time with the uh, SU4 invariant number n. So this motivates us to parameterize our spinner as a fold with uh, uh, sub uh, subject to the following constraint. Okay. Okay, so now let's talk about the measure that I uh, previously mentioned. So on Twitter space, there's a natural holomorphic measures that, <coughs> that has wave four in Z. And if you expand in terms of spinner, it has the following form. Not that there's a funny conformal factor pop up based on our definition of uh, spinner here. So beside this holomorphic measures, we also have an, uh, something called the anti-holomorphic measure, which I did not have D3Z bar here. So what uh, you do to define this guy is that you just put hat everywhere here, okay? Now uh, the total, the symplectic measure on Twitter space will be chosen at the following. So if you wedge D3Z with the D3Z bar, it's split into two parts. So the first part is a determinant, uh, is the conformal factor coming from the de uh, root square determinant of the matrix G. The second part is a top form on CP1. And the last part is just the usual D4X in four dimension. <clears throat> so now, uh, since we already have the square root determinant of the matrix, let me try to find the um, tensorial part of the effective matrix, a matrix emerged from the IKT matrix models. So um, to simplify um, the computation, we just consider this kinetic uh, term between uh, coordinate X and a scalar field. So if you do the computation, you see that the, uh, the tensorial structure of the, mat the effective matrix uh, will be this in the last n limit. So therefore, the total matrix in the last n limit is precisely what you expected uh, from, the, from the metric of the force field. Okay, <clears throat> so I talked about the em emergence of gravity in the IKKT matrix model. So now let me enter uh, what uh, I want to talk about, which is higher speed. Okay, so using the incident relations, you can write any functions, uh, any higher spin value functions in terms of function of X and lambda and lambda hat. <clears throat> so here now the space of functions will be defined uh, as polynomial as balance. Um, sorry, the space of function will contain polynomials, uh, balance polynomial in terms of lambda and lambda hat. And uh, beside uh, this spire function, we also have a spire function for the uh, vector modes, which I did not hear. So these coefficients have something interesting about them. So they are tensorial field in space time, although strictly speaking, we are in Euclidean um, signatures, so they are not fields. So uh, which is for irreducible modes, they are totally symmetric in uh, all 2n unprimed indices. So what we observe in our, our construction is the following. The fields that live on Twitter space will live in balanced way representation, meaning that you will have polynomials, uh, balanced polynomial in terms of lambda and lambda hat. However, when you remove the fiber coordinates, which is lambda and lambda hat here, the space time field will live in something called the maximally unbalanced representations. And this was previously studied in this paper. So, <coughs> okay. Okay, as a re, uh, as, so here's the remarks of previous uh, discussions. So the effective matrix at the last end limit will coincide with the usual one that you expected. Twister and spinner formalism will allow us, uh, will allow us to uh, formulate a straightforward analysis for higher spin fields. On Twitter space, uh, fields will live in balanced way representation with constrained highest rank tensor to increase with integer in spin. So this is not observed in the use of Twitter construction by, uh, by uh, Twister community. Okay, now the panel transform will carry fields in a balanced way representation on Twitter space to the maximally unbalanced representation on space time. Okay, so this is what I have present and this is what left. Okay, so now let's enter the new result. So due to the isomorphism between SP4 and SO5, we have the following decomposition of the Y uh, matrices. So it's split into two parts. The first part is a P matrices. Uh, 
So they are all anti, uh, anti symmetric. So this P uh, matrices are the four tangent modes, and the Q is the transfer modes of the fifth directions. So some small remarks are in order. The SO5 external symmetry will, will break supersymmetry explicitly since it acts on this Q. So this Q is a scalar field. And all the five coordinates of the IQQT matrix model that we haven't touched yet will be treated as a scalar fields of the internal group SU4. So now we can consider the following fluctuations. So P split into the background Y and the fluctuation A and Q split into the background Y5 and the fluctuation Phi hat which describe a scalar field. You can show that for large enough uh, radius in the semi-classical limit, all contribution associated to Wi-Fi will disappear or neglected, can be neglected. And we refer to this limit as a semi-classical and flat limit. So now in this semi-classical and flat limit, the Phi hat uh, scalar field here will rejoin with all the five scalar and transform in the adjoint of SU4. And now we recover supersymmetry completely. <laughs> okay, so um, it's all no technicality. So the action of the IQKT in the semi-classical limit is the following. Semi-classical and flat limits is the following. So, um, so now let me try to zoom in this uh, young mu term with the F square uh, described in uh, spinner formalism. So as you can see, unlike commutative field theories, the F square term is quite complicated, it contains four terms. So this is the usual kinetic term. Here is something what, that we call the strain terms. And here is a cubic interaction, the quartic interactions. So the significance of Spinoza's formalism is the following. There is no gauge fixing uh, term uh, that, uh, that has this form, uh, appears in a previous study of uh, Marcus and Harold. However, uh, okay, also, the strain term, which denotes in red here, inside the F square term can be absorbed by introducing an auxiliary field B. So by introducing this B field, we can absorb uh, all the garbage and the background in, in, uh, to this B field. And what we have left is the first order action of the IQT. Well, it's strictly first order action of this uh, BF, yeah, okay, young mu, uh, young mu part and the rest, okay. <clears throat> so by, so following the work of Chama and Siegel, we also drop some term in the action, in this action and obtain what we call the cell door sector of the IKKT matrix models. Under the requirement that this action is still gauge invariance. So this action is a uh, reminiscent of uh, the cell door N equal four super young mu in four dimensions studied by Chama and Siegel in the 96. Uh, <clears throat> so as you can see here, something different with this uh, uh, young mu action, super uh, self dual super young mu action is the following. The higher spin IKKT or just the IKKT contain higher derivative vertices because we have a Poisson structure. And if you want higher derivative, you will uh, replace this with the Y Moya bracket here. So where the lowest order are the gravitational nodes, which is two derivative uh, interactions due to the Poisson bracket. Okay, so it's a gravitational theory, funny enough. <clears throat> so now let me try to analyze the highest spin mode on Twitter space. So in terms of the highest, uh, so the, in terms of highest spin mode, the A field, which is the fluctuation of the P coordinate, will have two modes. A1 and A2, okay? And similarly, the B field, which is an auxiliary field, also contain two modes here and here. So we require the uh, A field transform as a following. Here is the usual um, local gauge symmetries. And here, maybe some of you haven't seen it uh, before. So this is called the algebraic symmetries, which, be, uh, which will be used to gauge away the unwanted second Eigen mode A2 here, okay? And the second mode of the B field will play the role of Lagrangian multiplier and give us the usual generalized Lorentz gauge, con Lorent gauge conditions of the following form. So uh, it can be shown that only the first Eigen mode of the A field and B field propagate in this game. <laughs> uh, so you can use uh, the instruction in this paper and sh show further that the A 
will carry one degree of freedom and describe positive helicity higher spin fields. And the B carry another one degree of freedom and describe negative helicity uh, higher spin field. So, so our gauge field carry only two degree of freedom as expected. So now let's try to study the equation of motion. No, no, free equation of motion. So the free equation of motion for the A field is the following. It has a following solution. So what's surprising to us is the following, the tensorial coefficients uh, A kappa 2s alpha and alpha prime have exactly the same solution, uh, which what we study in this paper using uh, twister inspired method. And also the free equation for the B field have also the same solution with what we study here. Okay, so uh, here are the remarks. So the spinner formalism allows us to organize the action of the IKT in full non-linearities non with the ambiguity of extra term which usually appear in the matrix model due to non-competitivity of space time. So our analysis show that space time fields are masked as high spin fields that carry two propagating degree of freedom, even though the original system live on five dimensional ambient space. And the solution of free equation motion in the semi-classical and flat limit coincide with the usual one of Twitter's theory in flat space after integrating our own fiber coordinate. So how do we integrating our own fiber coordinates? So you just plug in this integral. So it will give you a bunch of epsilon tensor and by expanding in purely in terms of uh, unbram indices and contract with, with this, this epsilon tensor, we obtain the space time action of the IKKT as the following. Here, um, the angle brackets, mean that we need to contract uh, uh, on, we need to contract on unbram indices in own possible way. Okay, so, um, so, so an advantage of this fuzzy twister construction is the following. We do not need to refer to twister cohomologies and everything is naturally higher spin extensible. Uh, so uh, also interaction on twister space are completely logical thanks to the balanced weight representations. And this is not, uh, you, you don't see this very often in higher spin uh, theories. Okay, so as a explicit example, we compute the lowest order of derivative of the Poisson bracket in the gauge sector, which is the BF term. And we obtain the following vertex in the gauge, uh, yeah, vertex, the cubic vertex, where alpha, as where the unbram indices of the partial derivative will be contracted with the unbram indices of this A field in own possible way. And we also have something called uh, V irrelevant, meaning that when you plug in the plan by solution, this guy disappear. So, um, so as you can see, there's two derivative, one and two. So the above vertex is of gravitation of type. <clears throat> And you can check that when you project this vertex in the Lycon gauge, it's matched with the vertex of uh, high spin extension of cell dual gravities, study in this paper. And uh, then you can compute the three point scattering amplitude, assuming that we have complex momentum. And this is the result. <coughs> this is the result. <coughs> okay, so here's uh, the remark of what I just said. <coughs> so, uh, I think that the fuzzy twister construction is suitable for finding higher order derivative uh, of higher spin field. Namely, we can also study the quartic and quintic if we have an, an appropriate actions. And the gauge invariant on Twitter space is easier to control compared to space time. And hence, it makes sense to explore high spin theories on Twitter space. So a natural question arises: can we obtain the same uh, cubic vertex, uh, vertex V3 from the usual twister construction? And the answer is yes. <clears throat> so what we try to do in our paper is that we try to higher speed extend the nonlinear graviton construction by Penrose. And now the curved twister space or deformed twister space, uh, I mean, okay, uh, is deformed, uh, diffeomorphic to what we call the projective uh, spinner bundle denoted PS. Okay, so we assume that all perturbation to be small such that, uh, so that the incident relations remain the same. Otherwise we have to deal with Correa theories. <clears throat> and then uh, our proposed action for um, gravitational high spin self-dual Young-Mill is the following. 
So by plugging in this uh, definition of holomorphic Poisson structures, uh, you see that it uh, produced the space-time action as the following. Not that there's something funny about these actions. Um, this measures the holomorphic, okay, thank you. So the holomorphic measure D3Z is not gauge, in, uh, it's not gauge invariant due to this higher spin diffeomorphism. And this creates a subtlety when you try to do um, the reduction procedure from Twitter space to space time. Okay. Okay. So, so what L Twitter theory teaches us? So, Twitter theory uh, teaches us the following. So, beside the self dual sector, we can try to ask a topological term and deform away from the self dual sector. And by integrating out this, uh, this B field, we obtain uh, what I call the gravi gravitational higher spin Young Mu actions here. Okay, so, and this is the gravitational extension of uh, high spin Young Mu theories obtained in 2021. <coughs> so, um, you may wonder what all of these are about. <coughs> okay, so the result from the Lycon gauge show that local high spin theories with propagating degree of freedom can uh, exist, okay, which is good. However, we, they can avoid both theorem by having trivial and simple holographic S matrix as studied by many people here. However, one of the legend in Lycon business say that uh, Lycon is the second best and we still need some covariant description of uh, higher spin theories. And throughout the years, there are so many um, discussion about having this story of uh, what shit formalism of high spin theories will be needed to construct consistent covariant high spin theories that can avoid novel theorems. And there's two options on the market at the moment. So the twister construction studied by these people and uh, the free differential algebra studied by these people. And uh, successfully, uh, this author was uh, obtained a com uh, complete theory of Cairo high spin theory using free differential uh, algebra. Okay, so, uh, what we have learned over the years of followings on the construction of viable high spin theories, the assumption of high spin symmetries is crucial to avoid novel theorems, but it's not enough. Uh, as, you, uh, as you can see in the literature, if you use the Fonda approach to tackle the problem of constructing uh, viable high spin theories, you soon will face the novel result for localities. And also the Lycon approach predict that there are no parity invariant theories with, uh, at the moment, I think it's uh, uh, predict that there's no local parity invariant uh, high spin theories, okay? So we, this uh, give us the following conjectures which I call the no, no free lunch conjectures. So if you want to construct unitary high spin theories, they must be non-local. And if you want to construct local high spin theories, they must be non-unitaries and there's no compromise. So over the years, what have we learned? So in the past, people believe that high spin prefer to live in ADS, but no, it can live on self dual background and also fuzzy background at the moment. Uh, they all, uh, people also believe that in flat space, high spin gravity can only be written in the Lycon gauge, but now covariant action of various high spin theory already found. Uh, Interaction can be very non-local, but no, sorry. And now many local interaction of high spin gravity has been found using free differential algebra or also twister constructions. Um, also in the past, uh, the reason why people uh, believe that high spin gravity prefer to live in ADS is the following. So uh, uh, people thought that the flat limit is rather hard to achieve. However, recent development show that there's a smooth deformation of high spin, chiral high spin gravity in flat space to ADS uh, versions, okay? So more surprisingly, um, but uh, as I mentioned before, by deforming away from the chiral sectors, we obtain something called the quasi chiral higher spin theories. And as an explicit example of high spin theories that are uh, not having trivial S matrix, uh, no, it's okay, <laughs> sorry. <clears throat> um, yeah, quasi chiral high spin theories as an explicit example of high spin theory that have non-trivial scattering amplitudes. And this was a surprise to us. And uh, in a few weeks, you will see uh, this the work on archive. So uh, to summarize, the main result uh, 
in our work with Harold since the followings, we were able to obtain a twister action for the high speed IKKT. And the fuzzy twister construction and the use of twister construction can complement each other in finding consistent high spin theory using either the balanced wave representation or the maximally unbalanced wave representations. So for future work, at the moment we study the we are studying the high spin IKKT on the fuzzy uh, for hyperboloid using twister formalism as before. And we're also looking for higher order in deformations. Um, and uh, yes, so the, this piece of construction will also allow us to find more high spin theories from Peter space and compute their scattering amplitude and much more to come. I now I will stop. Thank you for your attention. Thank you for being in time. Uh, questions? Uh, did you hear uh, about something what Penrose call, calls palatial twisters? Yes. So because I think this your uh, non-commutativity, at least non-commutativity, because you have z, z bar is equal chronicle delta, but you have z, z is equal c. It, so this is exactly that what he's getting in this palatial twister. Yeah, that, that's what I call the holomorphic Poisson structures on Peter's page. I don't know what you call, but uh, he, in in I would say eight years ago, he called it palatial twister. Yeah, so, palatial. so, so it's um, can you can you can you come back on this? This at the beginning of your talk. I mean, uh, can you we have these two relations? Uh, z bar z is equal to delta, and z z is equal to c. Yeah, yeah. Yes, absolutely. So you see, this what you put in the frame. Are just uh, just the, the the commutators of the palatial twisters. Yes. And C and B is related with so-called infinity twister. Yes. So so what, what what you I mean what what is your C in this case? Oh, in this case there will be more complicated when you try to do the reduction procedure to space time because now the Poisson structure will give you derivative uh, directional derivative acting on holomorphic form. Mm -hmm. And it will create something called the frame tracking effect, and it's quite complicated to reduce to space time when you want to integrate out fiber for it. Okay, I mean, so I, I think it's now. I mean, this deformation of twisters. It is the first deformation which was done by Penrose, yes. and he does exactly the same. Uh, I think he he put z z equals c a b, not z z bar. No, 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 no. There is z a and z bar. This is the usual part of the twister quantization, yeah. And the another uh, thing is something what what is kind of um, uh, holomorphic, yeah. Yes. So this holomorphic deformation is is, is is done by this palatial twister formalism. I I can tell you why he calls it palatial because he was uh, discussing this thing uh, with Atia in front of Buckingham Palace. So he so he said after that. You will call it palatial twisters because they came to this conclusion. Okay. okay. Yeah, thank you. Okay. Uh, are there other questions? Bad. Just for an explanation, uh, in all the series, only S2 is symplectic. All the others have no symplectic true form. So here, you're getting a so S4 is not a symplectic manifold, unlike S2. But you're considering SP, CP3 as an S2 bundle, I think, on S4. Yes. How do you get rid of the two extra coordinates? Uh, so this, when you plug in the incident relation, you have like X and lambda. So lambda acting at the fiber. And it's explicitly seen this, uh, this scalar form. So this is a two sphere, and this is a four sphere. Uh, yeah, yeah, is it a quantum S4 or I mean S2 can be quantized, the coordinates can be quantized. S4, are you quantizing the coordinates? No, 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 no. Space time should be classical. Is it a classical? Yeah. Still, 
but I, I, I take the flat and limit as early as possible so that I, I don't deal with this non competitivity problem. So this is not like S2, the fuzzy S2. No, no, no. Uh, uh, maybe can I address the, your question? Um, so what we quantize is only the six dimensional twister space. That is symplectic. You're completely right. S4 has no symplectic form and we're not quantizing that. But because we're quantizing the bundle, effectively through this vibration, um, there is a kind of, you know, there is a quantization in some sense on the base manifold, but in some sense, the Poisson tensor on a base manifold, it varies along the fiber. That's that's the trick. And this is actually similar to what the Doppelhofreden haben robots do. It's, it's actually quite similar, but it's it's now done by making its internal thing dynamic. That, that's a kind of... Okay. Denjo and the Denjo and Brian, they did something else. Okay. It's exactly the same thing as Denjo. So, but we, this fuzzy S4 and is precisely the same thing which has been known for 20 years and was done first by Gross Breschneider and then by Denjo and so on. It's exact, everything is the same thing. Same thing. Okay. Okay. Uh, if there are no other questions, we thank the speaker again and we reconvene in 20 minutes. Thank you.